Right, well, I've, uh, I've, I've supposedly got it started, so yeah, if you can uh, check uh, and see if it's there. Mm, yeah, not yet. Nope. Right, doing nothing. Are you refreshing the page? Yeah. Ah, here we go. Right, as it's live. We are, right. So, good evening fuckers, and uh, yeah, the uh, next live stream, and well, I think a fair few of you will already be well aware of uh, the fact that, uh, yeah, it was going to be this, because I uh, posted a poll asking what, uh, yeah, going to do in the next live stream. And uh, I wasn't expecting it, but uh, this one is the one that uh, uh, won. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't a joke suggestion. I do play this game, and I do quite like it. I don't, you know, I, I don't claim to be a, a great player of it, to put it mildly. I'm uh, probably, you know, very average at best. But, um, yeah, here we are with train simulator classic uh, the game that won the poll now I'll also explain that uh, yeah as always I only have the one screen and normally when I'm doing a stream I minimize the game so I can uh, you know check up on uh, the chat and check if there are any messages or any questions there now I can't do that with this game because uh, every time I do, the game crashes the desktop. So yeah, I'm a bit stuck there. So I've drafted uh, Jim yet again uh, to act as uh, messenger. So um, yeah, if there are any messages or any questions that appear during this, then he will be relaying them to me. I'm sure you'll love every second of it. Yeah, we have one already. Uh, Gans Teeth, all aboard. The uh, creator of the Lucosa Wars series. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's the one to blame. <laughs> um, right. Well, let's get uh, a scenario underway. Now, usually when I play this, I do play the career mode. It's the only mode that actually scores you any points. And um, as as you score points, it it gets converted to experience points, and it all counts towards uh, your player's level. I'm currently on level 27. Um, and Jim, doing the uh, yeah, acting as my uh, like question setter, uh, who also plays this game. Uh, you are level, is it 14? Yeah, I need to check that actually, because I've been playing Trains in World Two, practicing the um for, for my video. Ah, oh, okay. But yeah, um, I'm well well behind you now. Well, there aren't a huge number of people on my Steam list that uh, play this. Uh, I think there's only like five, and of those five, I'm third, and you are fourth. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> We're not doing brilliantly, but it could be a hell of a lot worse. All right, feel a bit better about that now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there is there is someone who who plays this who is below you. So there you go. Right. So I'm going to be doing two scenarios and uh, one. Well, I might do a third scenario, or it may be um, like a quick drive. Uh, the first one I'm going to be doing is on the Settle to Carlisle uh, route. 
<coughs> and the reason for choosing this one is because I'll be driving a class 37 and uh, all right the class 37 is not my favorite uh, locomotive my favorite is the class 55 but it looks identical to the 37 in every way um, you know they're the same size same shape the only difference is uh, the engines um, the class 37 doesn't have anything like the power of a class 55 largely because the 55 uses the Deltic engine, in fact it uses two of them, which gives it something in the region of four and a half thousand horsepower, which uh, is a, a, you know, not a bad amount. The 37 has less than half that, it's, it's got about two thousand, so I mean it's not exactly lacking, but uh, yeah, a long way behind. Uh, but I do like the class 37 engine sound, and in this game it is uh, pretty accurate as far as getting the engine sound right so yeah I was uh, I was alright with that so the scenario then for this one uh, the scenario is called waking up the neighbors which uh, yeah class 37s did very very well um, so the description uh, royal tour season is now in full swing today is no different today you are in charge of a tour from Leeds to Glasgow which is being worked by double-headed class 37 locomotives and mark 1 stock so that's two 37s mark 1 stock means I can't go hugely fast but then the class 37 can't go immensely fast anyway I think it can do 90 at best Anyway, we'll carry on. Uh, starting at Settle, the weather has not been kind, an unrelenting fog hangs over the hills. That's not going to be a problem, fog. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. You are required to head north along the picturesque route and make calls at Ribblehead, Garsdale, Appleby and finally Carlisle, where another driver will take over for the non-stop run up the West Coast Main Line to Glasgow. So, yeah. So I'm, uh, I forget where it said I'm starting, but yeah, I will finally end up in Carlisle. It looks very much like I don't have to do any shunting at the start of this, which I am very pleased about. I'm not a fan of doing shunting. So let's get this underway. not the fastest loading game but uh, it, it does also depend on uh, the amount of detail that is in any of the scenarios that are uh, getting used I don't think I've ever tried this route so uh, yeah, have it's you, first have for me have you got this one the settled a Carlisle one it's familiar I'll have to have a look I bought a few bits in the day, but um, probably not if it's a DLC. Oh, okay, yeah, this is a DLC. So, doors are open, so, uh, yeah, we uh, do have a double header to uh, class 37s, and uh, yeah, a fair few. Mark 1 carriages. As I say, the fact that they are Mark 1s means that uh, we're not going to be going hugely fast, but in this train, you, know, you can't go hugely fast. So, I should I mean, look how <laughs> the windscreen wipers do like so little. locomotives that I've got are the versions within this game. I don't have any of the Armstrong Powerhouse ones. Um, largely because, okay, yeah, they do look and sound good, but it's an extra 30 quid a pop that's unlike, yeah, I, I don't like them that much. 
I'm still somewhat of a beginner when it comes to the controls, so I have to use the hub controls in some cases and, and not in others. So, yeah, it's, it's not going to be completely authentic. But driving this train, it doesn't have any like, big surprises. It drives much the same as any other. Uh, a 1 in 100 incline to Riverhead. So let's uh, get down the way. We don't want to have too much of the power on this one to start with because uh, we don't want any real signal. So yeah, this, this train doesn't have any surprises as far well as uh, driving it, it's pretty much the same as any other diesel or electric, which is more than I can say for the other two trains that I'll be driving to the street. So after this one, we'll be heading down to the Isle of Wight and uh, doing a scenario while I was driving to the old 1930s underground uh, stop and then after that I'll have a stand and drive in a train that had a really awkward well awkward to be used to be uh, control method uh, so it'll be either a class 86 or a class 87 Scotty Doo who's just commented, I can't really hear your voice over the game audio. Have I got the uh, game audio too loud? Yeah, so try and turn it down in game without thinking over the walls. Yeah, that's going to be easily said and done. I mean, I suppose once I've off and down like this, it won't be so bad. But, uh, I did actually crank up the uh, volume of the mic. I'm well surprised that it's going to move this Well, I'll tell you what, we barely started, but um, let's let's try it. Let's, uh, let's see if the game audio, if the game will work if I turn the uh, desktop audio down. It's okay. Hell. It didn't crash the desktop. Okay, so yeah, let us know if that has made any difference. Uh, 
acceleration is not great. scheduled to arrive at 7.42 and 53 seconds and we're going to arrive at 7.43 and 37 seconds so I've got a bit of time to make up. Thanks, it sounds better. Okay, that's good. As soon as I take the throttle down, the speed just plummets. So again, we are going up. So Says what was that? There was a vote for this game. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it? You didn't see the poll. Yeah, believe it or not, this is the game that won. And it's not like I put a load of shit games with it. I had Elite Dangerous. I had Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I had uh, what was the other one? Never went to Knights of Tomb. I'm going to take a chance and see if I can just uh, improve the audio a little bit more, so uh, here we go. Right, that's lowered the audio just a tad more, and the game's crashed. So, we're going to have to start this scenario again from uh, scratch, but uh, at least... Hopefully the audio will be working. Uh, what a pain in the ass! But uh... all right, give me a sec, and uh, we'll uh, have the game back up and running. Right, so, uh, yeah, Jim, if you can let us know, once the game's up and running, if it can be seen, because sometimes when I restart a game, and obviously it's already recording, the um, yeah, the screen stays, stays black for some reason. Right, now you're all right, I can see Dovetail logging. Okay, so yeah. we're, oh, back, we're back on the main, uh, main menu then, yeah? Rodian, where was the vote posted? I probably voted for this as a goof anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was on my on my channel. It was on the um, uh, what's that fucking uh, community uh, tab. So right, let's start again. Um, I might actually make a better start because, as I say, I was a bit uh, behind schedule uh, then. Yeah, like I was saying at the uh, at the start of the video, I, uh, I I do like playing this game. You know, it's it's not a, a it wasn't a, a, a joke suggestion. I'm quite happy to um, do a video of this. Uh, I also 
Um, yeah, Jim, I actually uh, posted a link to the video that you did a couple of years ago, you know, when you were playing this and doing your old school room. So hopefully some oh, people yeah. will have seen that and, uh, you know, actually have an idea of what the game would look like, uh, you know, before <laughs> tuning in to watch this stream. Yeah, uh, that's not where I use the Armstrong Powerhouse um, Class 4 BP. Yeah. But the 4 big? That no, was the bet because it had the buffet car. Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't have anything as luxurious as buffet cars on any of the South End routes. Well, the other route was too oh, short, so it wasn't worth it. They were hardly the luxury, they were painted out to soggy sandwiches. <coughs> I think if there's one thing we can say about British Rail food, it was never, <laughs> never made out to be luxurious. That makes hospital food look like a gourmet serving. But I'd much rather see British Rail back than the, the absolute clusterfuck that we've got at the moment. But yeah, that's an understatement. So yeah, I hadn't made a great deal of uh, progress in the uh, first attempt, so let's see how we do this time. But I'll try not to, um, yeah, I'll, I'll try not to end up speeding like I did a couple of times. Scotty Doohan's in the UK is one big joke at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'll go along with that. Speaking of one big joke, and since we are on railways, did you see, um, actually I think Jim probably the one who would notice this more, that they named all the different lines on the overground, uh, London Overground Service? Yeah, to like the wind rush. Yeah, all these fucking bullshit woke names. And the, the one that I think it was the wind rush line is the Gospel Oaks of Barking line. Everyone knows that as the Goblin line. And that's how it's still going to be known. You know, they name it whatever they like. No one's going to call it that. In one respect, naming the different groups there is quite good because it's just all orange at the moment. I don't agree with the, with the names I actually take. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, it was inevitable that they were going to choose the sort of names that they did, but. Uh, Yeah, I don't think I got a hell of a lot further than this point anyway, when uh, I'm, you know, in the first attempt. Yeah. I also suspect that I actually had the uh, like game sounds a bit too loud anyway, because I think there were a few times in the Elite Dangerous videos where Seems quite loud. Less so in the Baldur's Gate ones, but uh, not a very Taking the floor right down, actually. Yeah, 
But I think this uh, this first stretch to uh, Rumblehead Station, I think it's almost entirely uh, uphill. I reckon if you could uh, actually gain options itself, not on ops, you can turn the master volume down there a little bit. Is there an option to do that? I don't think there is. Let's have a look. There must be. No, they're all graphic. There's options there. Yeah, that's what I was just doing, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, <clears throat> all I've got is audio options, no, uh, or rather, all I've got is uh, graphics options, no audio. No, that's a bit annoying. I mean, you, you, you can make out what you're saying. Uh, it's very loud, uh, locomotive doing. <laughs> well, quite loud, actually. Yeah, I mean, the, the Class 37 is uh, a very loud locomotive, bearing in mind that uh, there's two of them here. It's a miracle you can hear yourself sing. I'll tell you what, I, I can barely hear myself. I've, had, I've just had to turn it down on my headphones. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I shouldn't be that surprised that it is uh, a tad loud. passing that, uh, I don't know what class that locomotive was, it might have been a 50, but yeah, I remember passing that on, uh, fuck it, there we go. So, I did get caught speeding. Looks like the gradient is starting to level out a little, or maybe not. I had the mic away from my mouth a bit. Um, might just because I'm trying to stop myself sounding like Darth Vader in the videos. Constantly just have me breathing away like, like I'm wearing fucking scuba gear or something. Described this route as picturesque. It's not quite so picturesque when you're travelling through it in the uh, in the fog. Oh. Right, let's try and get a bit get us closer to the 60 again. five miles. So yeah, that bell telling me that uh, the next signal was green. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it would help if I was paying attention to the fucking uh, speed. Loss of speed because the gradient we're on, and it's easier said than done. Let's, let's get us back to uh, 60 again. So, yeah, 
at the moment I'm going to be late, but only by a few seconds. So it's not terrible. Drop the speed that quickly. Oh, a couple of messages there. Scotty, do you think you can always save? James T said, I thought the bell was, meant it was a team. I thought the bell meant what? It was a tea break. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, if you want to mean that, yeah, by all means. Yeah, I don't really like saving during uh, 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 doing a scenario. I I like to see if I can do it all in one go. So about two and a half miles from uh, first stop. remember the, yeah, the, the weight of this thing that I, I'm in. <coughs> no, actually, no, look at that. Look. And I wonder how far it's going to let me sort of like overshoot, considering there are two locomotives before we get to the first of the carriages. And clearly, we're not going to get all carriages stopping at this pissy little station. See what I mean about the AWS on these things? It sounds like it's blasting a fucking air horn in your face. Okay, obviously, I did slow down too early because, uh, yeah. <coughs> Still not even at the 30 mile an hour uh, limit yet. Breaking rather too hard, not a single carriage has actually uh, got there yet. So, yeah, it's 
only like about the first three carriages that are actually uh, on the platform, but I think it's good enough. Yep, it is. So I was a little bit late, but uh, by about 20 seconds or so. Which is enough, it will deduct points for that. But, uh, Well, if you're late at one, then there's a good chance here yeah, you're going to be late at all the rest, and so then it will keep uh, deducting points. I want to know how long I'm going to be stuck at this 30 uh, mile an hour uh, limit. Right, let's start it again. So my logo is way past. So well, actually, it looks like quite a few of the carriages are actually uh, made it there. Okay, so I was only deducted 15 points. ETA for the next uh, station, you know, I'm going to arrive about three minutes early. The thing is, if you arrive early, then it just keeps you waiting at the station for longer, so there's no real benefit to actually doing that. To your vid, um, I, I think you're better at this game than you give yourself credit for. Um, yeah, I think you're, you're underselling yourself. I think that was the last time I played it up until a couple of years ago. Well, up until I, well, when I started playing this. Um, towards the end of January I think I started playing this again. It had been 10 years since I last played it. <laughs> That's true, yeah, there wasn't like a time table you had to stick to, so you could be as late as you liked and it didn't make any difference. I want this 60 mile an hour uh, so I can hurry up and get here, so I can open up the taps a bit. That's not good though, because so I read light. Oh, let's see if I'm going on to that uh, rail. Okay. The old style semaphore uh, signals. Now we're into the 60 MPH uh, zone. We can't go 60 
MPH until the entire train has passed that signal, which I think is a game specific. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a game design choice. In in real life, it doesn't work like that. Well, this thing is at full revs and it's revving at 850 rpm. The engines, yeah, they're never in any danger of over revving this thing. This uh, hill that we're on. I mean, those headlights are really making all the difference, aren't they? starting to go downhill. So yeah, even though I'm coasting and I'm, I'm losing speed, but not by a hell of a, 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 a you know, hell of a rate. I don't know how long this fucking tunnel is, I might as well turn off the windscreen wiper. It makes fuck all difference anyway. Wipers on the Delta pretty useless, but here, you know, barely any point having them. And so we emerge. Still look quite. Uh, I do really like the old scenery here. That's why I want to get some more of the um, uh, Scottish DLCs, especially the West Coast, because the uh, uh, scenery there is just. Scotland is one of the most beautifully scenic countries in the world. Uh, I'm not exaggerating that. Okay, so we've got two uh, speed limits coming up. They are right on top of each other, so I can't see what they say. I think it's saying 30, but yeah. the old viaduct. Yeah, unfortunately that's as far as we can zoom out. Uh, 
is coming up. It's another 37. I don't know why this small area is 30. Oh, okay, there's a station here, that's fine. acceleration before taking it up to fall because I don't want any uh, wheel slip. It's just me. It seems like the acceleration when you're going through a tunnel is a lot slower than when you're out in the open. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. Less wind resistance. That's true. Yeah, surely the wind resistance would be reduced when you're going through one of these. Still going downhill, so probably coastal, but especially as the next station is just over one and a half miles away. We're still going to be coming in a hell of a lot early. Oh, yeah, earlier than we should be. So we're due to arrive at 8.01, 12 seconds, and we're coming in at 7.58 and 29. speed down so that I'm doing somewhere in the 30s uh, MPH as we pull into the station. I'm way above that at the moment. But, uh, I'll start braking just as we pass uh, point 0.5, which we are now. The other thing is, because I'm my ETA is sort of about two, two and a half minutes early. I'd probably be a bit, uh, you know, take it easy on the old braking.
I haven't left this one too late. But I forgot actually that uh, yeah, we're on a, a downward uh, gradient, so. <coughs> said yeah, it's better to um, stop short than overshoot. Well, with the scenarios, yeah, if you overshoot, then sometimes that can be game over straight away. So, yeah, I'd definitely go along with that. It is better to stop short. Where'd she come from? I do wish there were more scenarios in the game that gave you the option to drive the uh, Class 37 and even more that gave me the chance to drive the, the Class 55. So I, I've got 81 DLC for this game and out of all that lot I have one scenario to, to drive a Class 55. <laughs> seem to remember kind of an early iteration of this game it might have even been on the Microsoft Club we used to get a rating how comfortable the passengers found the journey mm. so if you slammed the brakes on too much or accelerated off too hard they um, it lowered your percent yeah and that's why this thing here is there that's your g-force meter there and yeah so if if it's going too close to the red, yeah, the passengers are, are all going to start complaining about it. Well, I don't think they do any more, but yeah, they certainly used to. So yeah, I was only supposed to have arrived here about, uh, yeah, 10 seconds ago. So I won't lose any points for, for being late, but you don't gain any points for being early. Parting here at 8.03, so... Looks so like a relatively sharp curve as soon as we uh, pull out of the station. So, time is bonus plus 200. So, my score is currently 555. So, that is a uh, bronze rating score. So, 
to get a bronze, you need to score between 500 and 749. Uh, the silver is between 750 and 899, and the gold is 900 and 1000. And 1000 is the most you can score in a uh, scenario. If you score less than 500, you'll get a tick uh, appearing next to the uh, scenario to show that you've done it. But, uh, yeah, it's not, not a medal or anything. If you fuck it up, then obviously you score zero. You don't even get the tick showing. Let's give it some beats. This is the engine uh, sound of this thing. Uh, the Class 37 is nicknamed the tractor. I can't imagine how he got that one. actually speeding until you're doing one mile an hour over the limit so if you're doing say 60 here if you're doing 60.9 that's fine but yeah, as soon as you get in the 61 then you're speeding so we're actually going uphill very slightly but uh, I don't really want to be coasting Those new locomotives have cruise control on them, don't they? It takes all the fun out of it, I think. Well, there's something of a, a cruise control in the uh, the class 86 or 87 that I'll be doing in the uh, last part. That, that does have a weird control uh, on it. And there were only four locomotives that used that controller uses a tap changer rather than a, a throttle. So the class 82s, 85s, 86 and 87s uh, all use that. I can't say I'm sorry as someone playing this game, I can't say I'm sorry that uh, yeah, none of the others do. It takes quite a bit of getting used to. Yeah, so that is why I've not thought about it because I've already, even though I only buy DLCs when they're on sale prices, I've paid so much for DLCs for this, I can't justify buying a different train sim and then getting the DLCs again for, for that. It just costs far too much, so yeah, I'll probably be sticking with this one. I mean, Train, uh, Train Sim World 4 looks fantastic. It uses a much better graphics engine. Um, as yeah, I think, yes, uh, Scotty was saying, it uses one of the Unreal engines. It could be Unreal 4 or 5. Um, so it looks great, but it's, it's just too expensive. 
So I, I'll stick with this and just keep getting DLCs for this. I mean, they're, they're still bringing out DLCs for this, so it's not like this game is obsolete or anything. Yeah, I've got Trains in World 2 with a couple of DLCs, and um, yeah, I've, you can't, there's no upgrade path to Trains in World 4, I've got to buy the whole thing outright. Yeah. But at least the DLCs that I have got would be compatible. Oh, okay, that I didn't know. But yeah, the, um, I've got the, uh, the Isle of Wight line and the um, Bakerloo line. But they don't, because they're Trains in World 2 DLCs, they don't get the enhanced visuals that the Trains in World 4 DLC provides. Oh, okay. So it seems to sort of moot the point of doing it. Well, I'd, I'd rather that than have to buy the DLCs again, that's for sure. So it's, it's sort of like the lesser of two evils, really. steep gradient we're coming down when I'm coasting and I'm still picking up speed. Yeah you got a speeding thing a minute ago didn't you? Yeah yeah I was speeding again earlier yeah. <laughs> I only lost um, eight points so you know not terrible but uh, yeah, I'd rather not lose any points of speeding. I mean, to be fair, I've only managed that twice in scenarios, so... Uh, yeah, it is a bit of a rarity. The DLC I have the hardest time avoiding... Um, deductions for speeding is the one I'm going to be doing next, the Isle of Wight. They are really difficult to uh, avoid speeding on. It's not quite such a steep gradient now, we are losing speed slightly. Thirteen and a half miles to reach uh, Appleby, named after Sir Humphrey on this. Spot the age of people who are watching this, see if they actually recognise the Sir Humphrey Appleby uh, reference. Oh, now we are picking up speed again. Wasn't that Yes Prime Minister? It was indeed, Yes Minister and, and Yes Prime Minister, which I consider to be the greatest sitcom uh, of all time. Yeah, it was really good. I actually don't mind the thick of it either. Oh, the thick of it was great. It's not quite up there with uh, Yes Minister, but yeah, it's still a good one. Gradient has definitely got steeper here. When I'm picking up speed, it's going up at a, a decent rate. So the throttle is at zero, but you know, yeah, you know, I'm having to constantly like brake and slow us down. I've got um, my ETA down, so I'm now only going to be five seconds late at this current rate. <coughs> and it will still make deductions for that, five seconds, but... Uh, yeah, it's 
any wheel slip there but it looked like we did. Ah, so this is why those two signals uh, are so close to each other. Why was that station we just gone past? Why was that there? We are Looks like we are in the middle of fuck all nowhere. There's a station like that when you're going from uh, South End to London. There's a station called West Horndon, and it is right out in the middle of nowhere. And in 51 years, I have never seen anyone get on or off at that station. One of those request stations. No, it's, it's not a request. The, the trains around. always stop there, but no one ever uses it. I don't think there are many of those request stop uh, stations still running, certainly in the south of England. I know there are a few still um, operating up in Scotland, but uh, I don't know about England. So I say certainly not in, in southern England. There might be some, you know, sort of Cumbria, Northumberland, sort of way. It looks like this gradient has, has leveled out a lot, but we're, we're still picking up speed. over seven miles to uh, Appleby and the rain starts again. Been alright with the signals so far. We haven't had any yellows, let alone any reds. Don't get complacent with that. <laughs> no, I've made that mistake a few times. Yeah, 
the, the view out the side isn't great, is it? <laughs> Just a dry stone wall, and that's about it. the view out of the side of the cat he, he looks out there and yeah the mind you the cab's a lot higher up in, in these things to another section where uh, yeah, we're gaining speed despite uh, just coasting I quite like this stretch though can see on your locomotive the throttle is graded it's completely sort of analog yeah and some of them are stepped with detents aren't they yeah the the notches especially the uh, the more modern ones um it does also tend to be um multiple units that have the uh, notches Made up the time uh, ETA is now um, slightly earlier than the uh, scheduled time. Oh. Three miles to the next station. It looks like we're going to be on a slight uphill gradient at the uh, by the time the station comes along. Slightly uphill, but not for long, one looks like. So there we are, station is uh, less than a mile and a half away. signal we just passed was not on the uh, HUD anywhere.
brakes. I think we need to uh, try and slow us down a bit more than this because, uh, yeah, we are going downhill. ETA and uh, the schedule times are currently exactly the same. Again, I've put too much brake on. It's, uh, not a great way of uh, pulling into a station, this, but. Uh, Looks like we got a red light ahead of us. See there, I, yeah, it looks like they're both lit. Okay, yeah, so it is the red one that's, that's on. Oh, hang on. No, I'm not doing that. that is for the uh, other line there. This is the one for us. So it is a green light for us. So the East Devon track runs through the valley at the front of my house. Got a nice view of the trains. Okay. The RAF flies really low on a daily basis. The two Chinooks and two Lynxes passed over yesterday in formation. Thought World War Three had started. The whole house is shaking. <laughs> so I, I, I can yeah, be careful. Be careful what you wish for. That's what I like to say. I, I could get used to the, the the trains going past, no problem, but. Yeah, fucking Chinooks and everything constantly, uh, yeah, that would drive me around the bend. Now, I'm on the main flight path into Heathrow, so the planes are only about a thousand foot above me, and they go right over the top of your flat. Yeah. Mind you, what makes more noise, them or the Barmy Army during the test? Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's the Barmy Army, it's nearly that for miles. Right, off we go. Next stop is the final stop of the run, Carlisle, 38.7 miles.
so we are on another downhill gradient so again we can coast for a little bit Seem weary. short platform but uh, I think that is why the 30 MPH limit was there. And that 60 it must be around where that wire duct is, maybe just before it. Can't see the sign, so maybe just past it. when you could lean out the window and your head narrowly missed an incoming train. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I never actually did stick my head out the window all that many times. Now we 
used to have a, a member of staff from British Rail who was driving all the guards to come round to the school and do talks on that. So there's lots of gruesome stories about young kids being decapitated. Oh yeah, they, they did like doing that sort of thing, you know, using the ultimate scare tactics. Throughout this entire route, this, this train has been travelling like well within itself. Well, this thing could do 90, and it's never had the chance to get anywhere near that. Yeah, that I used to do all the time. Because, uh, I mean, when we'd be pulling into, like, you know, Fenchurch Street or Liverpool Street, the trains would just be crawling along. So, I mean, yeah, you could jump off, uh, you know, long before the thing actually stops. get on it while it's moving as well. Yeah, that's true. I I never did that. Um, but usually because, yeah, I was always... I'd be stuck at the station waiting for ages for a train to show up. But, uh, yeah, certainly getting off on those moving, yeah, no problem. Trains all run well above ground. Yeah, there aren't too many as of them as you around go down here, south, are they? Yeah, as soon as you go down to Portsmouth, they're everywhere. Yeah, you were saying in, in your uh, video, the, uh, the level crossing that was the bane of your uh, existence. Yeah. <laughs> I could be sat there for 20 minutes in the car. He's taking the piece there. There's a lot of artifacts coming up on your screen yet. So they're driving it? through a bush. Uh, okay, that might have been um, that might have been a video problem then. It, it seemed okay here. That's yeah, right. Oh yeah, and we also had the smoking carriage. Yeah, um, which was always absolutely packed. Because now they're all no smoking. I mean, what a stupid idea. The other things that you get nowadays, of course, is uh, the, the silent cabin. 
and no one pays the slightest fucking attention to it. They're all still there on their phones and got fucking music or videos or whatever. And you just want to get out and punch them in the face. Tempted to do that a few times, and then I see the CCTV camera. Yeah, yeah. I know the, the description of this scenario said foggy, but I think it's been foggy the entire fucking trip. There's not a hell of a lot to see. Still going downhill, but uh, it's quite a gentle uh, downhill. We're not picking up speed. I'll say that, but now we are. Uh, used to sometimes catch the train from Liverpool Street to South End Victoria. Seem to recall South End Airport being somewhere along that route. Yeah, it's uh, not that far from Victoria. Um, so if you're heading out from Victoria towards London, the first stop is uh, Prittlewell, which is barely 100 yards out from uh, Victoria itself. Uh, then you've got um, I think then you've got Rochford and then it's South End Airport, so yeah it is pretty uh, pretty close. And that, plus the fact that this is a double headed uh, loco or double headed train, plays havoc with the uh, acceleration.
quite flat here. What gradients are there are so slight as, as to really not be making any difference. Still got uh, uh, just shy of 16 miles to go, so plenty of time for that to change. So he said, I now know why they're calling it the good old days. Not a fan of this woke future. No, I certainly ain't. I don't think you'll find too many people around here who are. Less than 15 miles to go. I think I'll turn my windscreen wipers off now. Go very slightly uphill. Yeah, if we were doing this on a clear day, I imagine like you know the, the scenery looking fucking great. But, uh, 
Yeah, not at the moment. It is the north of England. Clear days are a bit of a luxury, I think. Well, yeah, that, that is true. This is probably the middle of summer here. Yeah, during the heat wave. Uh, yeah. Especially if there's a test match on either chest of the street or uh, old traffic. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the one you get for that. Less than 10 miles now. signal that's not on the HUD. There have probably been quite a few actually, but I don't notice them all. Don't they only appear on the HUD if you've got to stop them? Uh, or signals. Uh, I don't know if. Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd have to stop at every signal because. Uh, oh no, I thought you meant stations. No, uh, with, with stations, yeah, you're right. It is uh, if you if you have to stop at them up here, otherwise. Sweet drop of every day, let's do it. Do it some more.
That was another signal that didn't show up on the on the hut there. Have you ever played the train, Escape to Normandy on the Commodore 64? Yep. Um, I thought it was okay. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, if Gansey is still watching, um, yeah, he did uh, a review of it uh, called Deer Hole. Well, it was a while ago now, but uh, yeah, he did a pretty good review of that. If, uh, check it out. But uh, yeah, I did play it back in the day. I wasn't, you know, it, it was all right, but yeah, I wouldn't say more than that. I remember who it was that it was Accolade, wasn't it, that did the train? Yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, that's what Ray's put. Accolade was a great company. I played test the test drive games. I thought, although the visuals were good, the way it drove was bloody awful. Yeah, I wasn't all that. Anyway, on, the, on the Amiga and the Commodore 64. Oh, I never played the 64 version of Test Drive. Right? Yeah, I played the Amiga one. No, I was not all that struck on it. Um, I think the best Accolade game I played was one of their early ones, um, Sci Fi Trading Company. That was fantastic. Uh, and Hardball was pretty good, even though I'm by no means a, a baseball fan. I thought Hardball was a great game. Uh, for, for the 64, I think the animation on, on the figures. Especially the uh, picture. Uh, that, was, that was fucking great. That was up there with uh, Impossible Mission for like how impressive uh, yeah, the animation on the figure was. I mean, again, Super Z. You know, I like the drive. The test drive was. I can't see the emoji thing anyway. It's so much fun, I think. I think, I think the oh, train was the last sort of like good accolade game on, on the 64. So they went a bit downhill after that. were released around the same time, they all looked yeah. fantastic at the time. Uh, Law of the West was a bit simplistic, uh, it looked great, but yeah, the gameplay was yeah, very simple. Um, so it was the weakest of the three, it was by no means a bad game, not at all. Uh, I did a review of that, again, fucking years ago, I can't remember what I said about it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't mind... Uh, all the West. But well, compared to Sci Fi and uh, and Hardball, yeah, it was uh, it's not out there with those two. So we've got 20 mph uh, limit coming up, so we must be, yeah, we're just over two miles from Carlisle. He says, yeah, he had the, he bought the three pack compilation of all three of them. But I didn't have that, I had the, uh, I, I bought three of them uh, separately. So I paid, I paid full price for uh, Sci Fi because that was a game where I was, as soon as I saw it, I was going to get it. Um, Hardball, I think I, 
I think I got it for about seven quid, so it was reduced a little bit, not a hell of a lot. Uh, Lord of West I got for like three quid. It wasn't a re-release or anything, it was just on a sale. Uh, so I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll have that. slowed down a little bit early but I mean I'm now over a minute ahead of the uh, scheduled arrival so you know, I've got time to spare so we're then approaching a, a 50 mph uh, area but by the time I'm going to be able to get the speed up we're hitting another 20 mph so it'll probably be a case of yeah we'll, we'll just coast to 20 50 now, but up in 0 0.13 of a mile, and then I've got to drop back down to 20 again. is asking, did anyone ever play Southern Bell or Evening Star in the Commodore 64? Uh, Southern Bell, no. Evening Star. The only Evening Star I know is uh, the, uh, the Class 9F uh, Loco. Uh, I, I don't know if it's uh, if that's what it is, but uh, yeah, I, I certainly don't know the game. Yeah, I don't either. This is what he said. Remember, it's at the end of the scenario where you fail, so don't get too cosy. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I, I'm well aware of it. <laughs> everyone off. We arrived about 50 seconds early. But there we go, that is the run uh, completed. 
so I'll see what I score. So if I get 200 for this, which I should do because I say I was I was early, not late. That will mean it'll be uh, a gold rating for that one, which uh, I'll certainly take. I'd have been happy with a fucking bronze for this. I was not expecting to get a, a gold for, for this thing. You had a couple of speedings, I think, so two people as well. Yeah, I mean, as, lo as long as my score's over 900, well, if it's 900 plus, then that's uh, the uh, gold rating. So nine four five. So yeah, another driver takes over. Off. So yeah, let's have a look. There we are. Yeah. So uh, nine hundred forty-five XP. So I'm still on level twenty-seven. So yeah, I've got quite a few uh, speeding um, deductions. Uh, so I was late for this station here, Ribblehead. That's the only one that I was late at. Uh, again, a few more speeding here. But yeah, um, 945 I will absolutely take. Uh, oh, and I've passed 60,000 uh, experience points. So yeah, definitely a result for that one. That's... Uh, was quite the success. Yeah, Scott, you just said the job well done. Well, let's try one then that is going to be a bit more of a challenge. And I know it's a bit more of a challenge because I've attempted this one once before and uh, I made a total bollocks up of it. So much so that uh, it doesn't even show a rating it, it shows me as, as not having uh, <laughs> not having played it so there's the one I've just done with the gold rating there and it is yeah the Isle of Wight and it's this one peer pressure <coughs> so uh, the description today you are, are undergoing a performance review so the pressure is on to exactly hit your timetable Drive a passenger service from Ride Pier Head to Shanklin. So it's basically the entire length of the uh, the main Isle of Wight rail service. Um, so we will be driving a class 483 uh, EMU, which is a former London Underground train. And the reason why this one is rather more tricky is that firstly the trains behave a bit differently. Um, it's a lot smaller, it's only two cars. It's a lot lighter, so the acceleration rate is good. Unfortunately, the brakes on this thing are like milk bottle tops. Um, yeah, braking is a bit of a uh, a bit of a task so let's see how we do So this is one that takes a little while to load up, I think, especially as I am basically having to run the entire length of the... Uh... Alright, so I need to well, wait until 15.49 to depart. And I need to pick up the passengers. Oh, okay, I think they've already been picked up. So... Uh, So yeah, that's that's the whole thing that uh, I'm I'm driving. So not uh, 
yeah, it's not a long thing, but um, yeah, the the stations that uh, we're having to stop at are all quite short as well. So this being a uh, a short uh, short train does not mean it's going to be. Yeah, easy pulling into the stations. Now it's usually around here that I get my first uh, speeding warning. Speed limit's 20 now. Oh, all right. So I actually spend most of my time on this scenario just watching the speed limit. <laughs> This is a, a much smaller scale um, sort of railway. There are very few signals. The train has no AWS system, so uh, if if you, you know, you're approaching a signal, or whatever, you don't get any kind of advance warning. So you've got to uh, yeah keep a lookout. So, we're a few seconds early. Well, I didn't get any deductions there, so I've already done better than I did last time. But, um, yeah, I've got to <laughs> repeat this for another two, three, four, five, six stops. And where I royally fucked up in my first attempt was, uh, yeah, you guessed it. Overshot one of the uh, stations. And that meant no point. As long as it wasn't Shanklin that you overshot. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't that one. I can't remember which one it was actually, but I'm sure when we get there, I'll recognise it, because it was on a curve. Now, yeah, this is one of the areas where, yeah, I have a bit of trouble, because the train continues to accelerate, even though I've got the throttle down to zero. We're not on a gradient or anything, so that's not what's causing it. So, yeah, I've no idea why it's doing that. There is a slight gradient on it. I remember being there. There is, when you go through the right tunnel. Okay. I mean, it's showing that the, the, the gradient at the moment is actually uphill. But it's so slight as to, I can't believe it would be making any difference. There's no 75% on the uh, throttle. It goes straight from 50 to 100.
Looks like I'm going to be a few seconds late here. Once we leave this station, we can go up to the max speed of 45. So yeah, we were a few seconds late that time. So that will affect the score, but uh, it won't mean that uh, I'll have failed or anything. Well, I don't think it will. <laughs> I fucking hope not. <laughs> Stop. Small brick junction. Yeah, pretend you didn't see that bloke just disappear in the thin air at the end of the platform there. Eh? Seen him walking around on the track in this game. Yeah, especially at. Uh, Terminuses, they, they have a habit of doing that. They walk right through your cabin as well. Yeah, walk. Waterloo. Well, it's interesting, on the Train Sim World 2 version of this DLC, the throttle is off, shunting, series, and parallel. It's the four um, notches. I mean, I dare say it's working exactly the same way here, but uh, all right, I need to get myself down to thirty before I'm approaching the station. To say the brakes on this thing are so crap that. Uh, So I'm almost certainly going to be late here. See, it looks like I'm only going to be about 19 seconds late, so it's, again, it's not terrible. close. Uh, yeah, this is the one that I missed. My first attempt. Just about got away with it this time. This station's interesting in, in as much as there's no exit for the passengers from the platform. You can literally go to the station, get off the train, walk, walk across to another platform and get on the steam railway. You can't actually exit the station. All right. There's no roads or anything so coming off it. There's no sort of like barriers as well to stop uh, people walking off the tracks either. Now you look around here, it's just all completely open. Yeah, I think there may be a fence on the left there in real life. It must be. I can't believe they would leave it completely open like this. Alright, so three minutes to get to the next one. I'm uh, I'm already a bit late. 
I was a bit slow uh, leaving that station though, which uh, doesn't help. Bang up the date compared to these ones from the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah, that was a change them in 2021, didn't they? Yeah, uh, yeah. And they pretty much only did it because they had to, because these 1930s ones are all falling apart. Oh, they were rattling and rusting and everything. speed in a, in a sec. Yeah, I'll do. Okay, we reduced speed a hell of a lot earlier than we needed to, but uh, now we're going down the hill. So I'm wondering that's, if that's why the uh, need to reduce speed, because uh, it's uh, down the hill section. Again, having a go at the brakes. Because we just keep picking up speed all the time. When the speed limit is only 40 mph, then uh, yeah. Keep a pretty close eye on that. So, according to this, I'm going to be well late over a minute. That's going to really uh, hit my score big time. It's coming down a little bit now. I'm still going to be. Late by about 40 seconds. Right. Let's get the speed down to 20. Yeah, according to the time, I should have already been at the station by now. I don't know if I can hear it. And I can't exactly speed up because uh, then I get done for speeding. Made it, but uh, yeah, rather late. How many stops we got? Three more. Yeah, should be um, Sandown Lake and then Shanklin. Sand down Lake Shanklin, yep. Okay, well, I still got uh, plus points. There's nowhere near as many as I'd like. So I'm on to uh, the uh, bronze uh, rating. Now we're 
going to a 45 MPH uh, area. Yes, no um, signals anywhere on the HUD. The, the, the area on the HUD here for the AWS completely blank. It doesn't have one. That seems wrong to me because this is a single track bit where the north and southbound both use this track. Uh. Again, I'm going to be a bit late by the looks of it, but it's not by a huge amount. Need to do a hefty bit of braking soon. It's down to 15. Uphill a fair bit. Well, I hope you are slowing us a bit. Oh, here we go, there's a signal here, it's yellow. So we're all right, but. Uh, yeah, it looks like next signal's green, yeah. Brake, you really do crawl along with this uh, stop. We're not going to be stopping here for a hell of a long time because, yeah, I've got some time to make up. So I think I was, well, I wasn't a minute late, but it, uh, I wasn't far off it. But two more to go. Lake is next. Thankfully, it doesn't last very long. <coughs> they 
rather exaggerated the sound effect when you're going over the bridge there. station is just over half a mile away so we're not going to get ahead of a lot of speed up. See, the, the speed is still increasing, even though, uh, and according to the, uh, the HUD there, I'm on a, an uphill gradient. But I may have made up some time here. Pretty much spot on. Okay, last stop coming up. Just over a mile away, which uh, by, by Isle of Wight uh, standards is, uh, yeah, immense. So yeah, Jim, how does this compare to the uh, uh, train sim world one that you've got? I think the train sim world two one is slightly more realistic. You don't have the HUD thing you've got. No. Um, where, you, where you control the um, throttle and the brakes. Okay. So you, you've got to use you the actual. You've got to use the actual train controls then. Yeah, I mean, you do see similar to what you're seeing with, you know, with the gradients and um, how far away you are from the station. Right. I think the graphics are slightly better as well. Well, it is a much newer game, so yeah, that, that doesn't yeah. come as any surprise. Yeah. So I say, I don't think I got this when the game was new, and I got it in 2012, so, yeah. I mean, it's not bad, it's not bad. Oh, it certainly ain't bad. Well, my next train sim video, I will be doing this on the train sim world uh, version. Yeah, I'll be interested to see uh, how the two compare. That 
right, so this is where you don't want to overshoot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> straight into a brick wall. <laughs> yeah. So I should get the maximum for this stop. I don't know how many points I get for the maximum, but uh, yeah, it looks like I well yeah I've certainly been a lot more successful than I was on my first attempt at, at this route. Well, that is it. I mean, it is only a, a short one, especially compared to the first one. Let's see how I've done score-wise. I think it may have already added it. Uh, 776 that will soon find out well that's enough for a silver rating and after my first attempt I will certainly take a silver there we go 919 so actually I've got a uh, fucking gold level your reviewer is very impressed there you go have some of that <laughs> There you go, you get to keep your job. <laughs> oh, lucky on me. So, um, yeah, no speeding anywhere. Yeah, I was late at a couple of stations. Yeah, so, late at Braiding, late at uh, Sandown, everywhere else on time. So, uh, not too shabby at all. And my rating's gone up to uh, 28. So if we just uh, take a look at the uh, career, that should have been added. Uh, yeah, here we are. So yeah, that's the one I've just done. So I already got a gold rating for that one. Um, so yeah, after a, a rough old start on the Isle of Wight, I'm I'm doing okay there now. So that is um, yeah, the class 483, a, a bit of a quirky uh, uh, train to uh, drive, but it's nothing compared to what I'll be taking on the third one. So this one will be uh, a quick drive. Oh, I'm going to change the locomotive, it's on a class 86. I'm going to change it to the 87. So, there we go. And I want... Uh, right, so I'll take nine Mark III A coaches. So we're doing the Woodhead line. We are departing from Manchester. Now, destination is somewhere called Penis Stone. And yes, I do know I have pronounced that wrong. So, right. Let's get this one underway then. And I'll try and show how to drive to class 87. Uh, the class 86 is driven exactly the same way, I say. I think this one can take a little while to load because there are a lot of assets <coughs> being used on this line. But the fact that it's quick drive means, you know, I'm not following any uh, timetables or anything like that. And I'm not going to be scored on this run. God damn, I knew this one took a little bit to load, but I didn't think it was this long. Alright, here we are. So, yep, here is our class 87. So what I'll do, to start with, 
I'll drive it like I do normally, like in, in you know the other trains that you've seen so far. So let's uh, okay, put it into 60%, and it's still not moving. Okay, right. Let's see. If we, yeah. Okay, we actually get some traction now with 100%. Uh, And now I've got to throttle down because, of course, uh, I was about to uh, start speeding. But I'm still going to be speeding if I don't throttle down a bit or apply some brakes. There we go. Right, so the speed's coming down quite a bit now, so let's put the throttle up. And there's the acceleration. Okay, it is actually starting to accelerate now. But now it's not. I'm doing 14.5. I've got it on 100% throttle, but it's not accelerating. You know, what, what the fucking hell is going on? And that's what driving a class 47 is, is like if you don't know what you're doing. So, okay, right. Down, uh, up, no, okay, we'll turn, put it down to throttle off, and now let's turn it up again, and uh, it's still nothing. Ah, oh, now we're getting a, a, a bit of acceleration here, great, okay, alright. Oh, can't accelerate too much more, because otherwise we'll end up speeding, okay. speed so let's put some throttle on to uh, try and make up for that speed the throttle's not doing anything again I've got it at 60% and it's yeah I'm not accelerating let's put it up to 100 and it's not accelerating okay now it is but in order to get any acceleration why have I got to put it on 100% right we're now in an area where we can go 30 but now I've got the throttle up full and we, we're crawling along again and the acceleration is ah. so you see what I mean if you don't know what you're doing with a class 87 that's what it's like to drive the thing constantly putting on full throttle and the thing doesn't move or the acceleration is, is next to nothing so let's uh, restart it. And thankfully it doesn't take anywhere near oh, as long as we load. Oh, okay. Painter's just come on. He says, hello, commanders. Oh, excuse me, operators. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've, had a bit, we've had a bit of a downgrade uh, for this one. Okay, well, I thought we didn't take as long to uh, load once you... Uh, just reset it, but uh, clearly it does. Right. So what I'll do this time is I will drive it again as if I'm driving a normal one. But while I'm doing it, keep your eyes on these gauges these two as well but particularly these ones okay I'll keep it zoomed in a bit so that uh, I can see what I'm doing but you can see those so brakes off put the uh, reverser into forward and to accelerate here we go so we are having to do a hundred percent again Don't, don't want to break the thing, so right. We'll, yeah, we don't want to break the speed limit. But now we're slowing down, and 
yeah, see again, I've got it at full throttle and there's no acceleration. Again, it's not doing anything. In fact, I'm slowing down despite the fact that I have got uh, the throttle on max. So, we'll restart again, and this time we'll drive it properly. Well, I'll start with a little bit of an explanation. So, when um, I put the the, uh, the throttle on full, you saw those dials that I told you to keep an eye on, and the readings of them was, were shooting up. And yeah, that's something that uh, you, you, you need to keep an eye on. And uh, thankfully, when you're first starting up, there's a sort of fail safe because you do not want these power readings going into the red. If they go into the red, then yeah, the train is in real trouble. You don't really want them going into the yellow, but when you're first starting, you kind of have to. So you look at the uh, controls here. In fact, I'm going to lower the uh, pantograph for a minute. So you have all the regular controls. You, you've got your, your locomotive brake here. This is the uh, train brake. Yeah. Uh, here's the reverser. And then you got this thing. Which you know is is your throttle, except it doesn't say throttle. It says tap changer because this uses a very different method of actually uh, powering and, and and getting this train actually moving. So when I was driving the class 37, you could see that the uh, uh, the throttle had basically any uh, amount can be given from 0 to 100 and uh, Jim mentioned uh, during that one that uh, when you're driving the more modern uh, trains uh, especially if you're driving emus or demus um, they have notches it's usually four so of course each dot each notch is increasing like 25 cent power so the power is fed like very directly this doesn't work like that. So you see that uh, y you've got like off, and notice it says off. It doesn't say 0%, it does say off, and there, there's a reason for that. So then you have down with run and notch, hold, and then you have up, run and notch. So whereas the, uh, say, the modern demus have like four different notches this thing also runs by using notches but it doesn't have four of them it has 39 of them um, and rather than giving it uh, a throttle with like 39 different notches in it they've given it this tap changer thing and uh, the way that you get power from like the, the, the transformer, the, you know, the electric motor, to uh, the, the wheels to actually get this thing moving, is done in like you, you've got three different ways of doing it. So if you put it into 60%, which is the hold position, that means that uh, the notch that you're on, the amount of power going to the wheels, is going to stay the same. Then, if, if you want to reduce the amount of power, you just tap down to you know, a notch below, hence notch down, and as soon as it does that, it then puts it back into the hold position. The same way, if you want to increase the, the power, and increase the uh, like acceleration and that, you go up a notch, and so on and so on. And if you want to increase it by, like, you know, several notches, not just one notch at a time, that's when you would then put it into run, 
or if you want to decrease it several, then that's when you put it into run down. So that's a, a rough explanation. So if we now set about trying to get this thing to move, or hopefully show you what I mean. So we'll put it into hold. So you watch the uh, the power bars here. These are amp uh, meters. So we'll just notch up one. And you can see they are coming up. We'll notch again. They've gone up again. Notch a third. Still in the green. Notch the fourth. We're just heading into the yellow. But it is dropping down. There is more power being made available. So we're accelerating but fairly slowly. We're only in the fourth notch. So we'll go to five. Six, and the acceleration rate is improving but of course we soon won't want it to uh, be improving because we are approaching the 15 mile an hour speed limit so I've run it down so that it's now basically back down to uh, not to zero basically. So we'll put it back into a uh, holding position. I'd accidentally put it into not up, so we're going to start picking up a little speed. Not up again. approaching the uh, 30 mile an hour uh, zone. Not so, uh, see what you mean by uh, when you said it was complicated. Yeah, it's... It's, it is a bit convoluted, um, but as, as you practice with it, it does start to make sense. It's a, it's a lot easier once you are underway. It's getting the thing started that is the pain. Uh, yes, you can drop uh, yeah, oh, the sander, you can use that to e improve your uh, grip levels. Alright, so we can now start uh, putting some notches up because we're into the 30 uh, mph uh, area. Yeah, Jim, I don't know if you've got uh, a class 87 or 86 uh, DLC for, for this or Train Sim World, but uh, yeah, if you do, you've got this to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of getting used to that one. I say it's, it's fine once you do get used to it, but... Um, yeah, there are some other quirks to, to uh, get used to as well. I think we are about to uh, approach one. So we're soon going to be able to go up to uh, 50. Okay, right, that wasn't uh, a 
an area that I was thinking of. So let's uh, get some uh, more notches there. So you can see the uh, the amp meters are now staying well in the green because I mean these notches they're like gears basically working exactly the same way. So the you know, the faster we're going, the more power we're going, then each knot just allows for a greater acceleration and and greater top speed. So it is, it's possible to uh, accelerate at a significantly uh, faster rate than I have been doing so far. This is just uh, me trying to show how to uh, drive this bloody thing. So this uh, this class 87, its top speed is 110. And obviously, to reach that sort of speed, you're going to be up into the top dots, not uh, 39. So we are now going to, uh, yeah, about to uh, start speeding. So I put the uh, I put it into off mode. Now the the thing with turning it off is you've now got to wait for uh, the transformers and all of the notches and that to go back down to zero, and it does it by steps. So I mean, obviously we're still moving just fine. We're not accelerating, but we're not decelerating. But at the moment, we can't power the thing up again. So hopefully, yeah, we can now start. In fact, if we put it into run up, it'll go through each of the notches um, in a gradual order. You can see this thing is constantly uh, rising. So now I, I know these readings here, they do sort of tell you which notch you're in, but I don't know um, how it does because this is yeah this is a reading of between 40 and 60. Well, there's only 39 notches. What I do know is if if this uh, reading here reaches 100, the engine will automatically cut off. Now the other thing that uh, you also need to keep in mind when you're driving this thing is uh, they'll appear on the HUD. I thought there was one fairly close by once we pull out the station but it doesn't seem that there is. But you get these areas uh, called neutral areas and there's no power being fed to uh, the, the loco from the overhead cables when you're in those uh, sections. So, when you go through one of those, it effectively um, puts the controller into off position because there's no power coming to it. So, you would have to basically reset the, um, uh, yeah, your controller. So, if we just check here, that has gone all the way back down to zero again. So now we can um, put them back on, and if we run it back up, have it going through the various cycles. I don't really want to be accelerating here because there's a 35 mph uh, section coming up here. So we'll, we'll apply brakes. We need to apply a lot of brakes here, I think. Clubs. That'd be 
because I had the uh, the notches on uh, run down, or the, yeah, the uh, tap changer on run down, is run all the way down so the notches are back to uh, zero again. So I've basically got to start the sequence again from scratch. Out of the uh, 35 mph uh, area and onto the uh, uh, into the 75 mph, and then uh, we can then get some decent speed up. A couple of messages from Peter here. I love watching train videos to relax, be it from Norway, Sweden, Australia, Indonesia. I like how it fixes time and the outside world passes by. I totally agree with him when it comes to watching the train videos, especially in Norway. I love watching those Norwegian ones because the, the, the landscape is just staggering. But yeah, go on. So he learned that Rick Wakeman from Yes is a big rail fan. He was at the maiden voyage of a restored ancient UK diesel locomotive. Oh, I wouldn't be at all surprised about that. Right, let's get some, let's put the uh, notches up into the yellow, which we're not meant to do, but... Uh, oh, fucking hell, we've got another 50 MPH uh, coming up. So anyway, that is uh, yeah driving a uh, a class 87, and yeah the 86 is exactly the same. The only difference in um, uh, driving with the uh, the 86 is that one only has 38 notches, not 39. Uh, so its its top speed is I think you'll get 100 out of it, but only just. Whereas with the 87, yeah you'll get 110. Uh, but that is pretty much the, it as far as uh, differences between yeah, the A6 and A7. Uh, the other ones that use that controller, so yeah, the 85 and the 82, they're not in um, Trade Simulator Classic. I don't know if they're in any of the other ones, you know, Trade Simulator World, uh, Trade Simulator World or, or whatever, but uh, yeah, they're, they're not in this, so. But uh, yeah, it's say so it is a bit of a <laughs> it is a bit of a convoluted uh, method of uh, controlling uh, uh, driving uh, the train. But uh, so once you get used to it, it's it's not too bad. But uh, it's the getting used to it bit that's uh, yeah, that's the challenge. Okay, right, what is the time? Half past ten. Have we got time for one more, or do we call it a night? I was meant to actually quit the main menu there. No, I don't know if uh, Jim's... Uh, What do you call it? Um, Discord has decided to mute him or something. Um, but I'm not hearing it. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, I forgot I've done that. So I was talking away to to nobody. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, so I I can uh, have a stab at one more fairly short one, or we can call it a night. Uh, Mine's up to you. We've still got 11 people watching. Alright, is there a shortish one that uh, 
Well, there's plenty of shortish ones that I've not tried. Well, I'll tell you what, is there a class 87 one that I, well, I know I haven't tried because I've not tried scoring runs of any of them. Actually, I'll tell you, I did try one um, last night. And to give you an idea of, yeah, just how not used to these trains I am, um, I did get a score. I got a score of minus 3,004. <laughs> really set the bar high then. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so this is a class 86 one here. So Freightliner. Uh, this is right, West Coast Main Line North. Take the driving seat for a London bound Freightliner train. Get to the Abington Loop on time so an express passenger service can pass on the main line. 35 minutes. All right, let's give this a go. This will be the last one. Seeing as I'll show oh, hey, it's found that he's found that thing. Rick Wait Rick Wakeman unveils Radio Caroline locomotive, unveiling an interview at Mangat Railway Museum. So that's obviously the video title. Okay, I'll have a look at that. I I don't know anything about it, so I don't know what. Um, what loco it is that uh, you know they they've worked on. Seems like this is another slow loading one. So I know I've got a, a big old freight train on, on this. I think I'm carrying or pulling something like 20 uh, freight wagons on, on this one. So, fuck yeah, so it's a double header. Uh, Maximum allowed speed for your train is 75, so be careful not to exceed this. Well, I can only just exceed that. There'll be no bonus for passing your waypoints early. But I will be, uh, yeah, among that if I am late. So, yeah, I mean, see on the HUD just how big this fucking thing is. There's no cab lights in the uh, 86. I need them because I can't see uh, can't see the reading very well. All right, away we go. I don't want to see a good one. Ah, oh, bollocks! I accidentally put it into the off uh, mode. And they've all come down. I think I can, yeah. Let's run it up. tried to do last night by the way so this was a proper simulator the train would leave late anyway. <laughs> yeah, mm, I suppose yeah. Can't really argue with that. Or would it be a bus? Yeah, so yeah, it'd be the, the freight uh, bus replacement service. Fuck it up. So I've got a 
15 mile an hour area coming up, but I'm not stopping at that. Uh, Like, uh, it, it, did he work for British Rail at any point? Because, yeah, that definitely sounds like something they said. He's not apologetic enough to work for British Rail. That's true. Well, I'd like to announce we are sorry for everything. You never know someone farted up ahead. It could be the wrong type of car. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, yeah. It'll, it'll always be the wrong type, wouldn't it? Yeah, wrong type of leaves on the track. I, I even heard the wrong type of sun because it was glaring so much you couldn't see the CCTV. Oh, okay, I, I've not heard that that's one it. before. Like a red signal up ahead. That red signal is not for us. Section where I should be doing 75. We're about to hit 15 anyway. Yeah. Excuse I heard on last Sunday. It was, it was delayed because of uh, the reason. I mean, yeah, that 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 does rather say it all, doesn't it? That. run out of it. Remember 
yeah, it said top speed was 75, I can't go higher than that. But I suspect, <coughs> with the amount that uh, I'm pulling with me, I probably wouldn't be able to do 75, I probably wouldn't reach that high. Catch that, was that? So, what, what's the point of that middle window with no wipers in it? Uh, well, maybe in the in, in the summer, the, you, know, you might get one day of the week when uh, yeah, you don't need it, or you, or you can actually you know see through it. I'm nearly two minutes late. Even though I've been, you know, I've been shifting a bit. Timing as penalties plus 200, so feds. 
looks like I've done alright now. I've got the maximum. So the next section is in just under the 10 miles. The other thing that uh, I'm not so keen on this loco for, I suspect most people watching this will have already uh, probably come to the same conclusion. It's a noisy fucking thing, this. Well, you can barely hear me over it. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, I can just about hear you. So, yeah, I think that rather says it all. Armstrong Powerhouse version is it's still noisy but nothing like uh, as bad as this but yeah I'm not shelling out 30 quid just for a version of this train with better sound and a few more like things that you can click on in, in the cab If it's uh, yeah, if it's one of those that uh, you know you've not already got, then you can probably justify it a bit more. But I mean, I've already got the class 87 right here, so why would I then you know shell out another 30 quid just to change some of the uh, you know, I'll say the audio is better and, and some of the switches do things better. So it's a lot to pay just for you know, such a small improvements. Yeah. Like I said, sorry, did you just say something? He's struggling to hear vocals. What was that, sorry? Ray just said, sorry, did you say something? So he's obviously struggling to hear the vocals. Well, I mean, there is something I can do to shut that noise off for a bit. You're not really meant to do this. And in some trains, this activates a uh, emergency procedure. In fact, it's not letting me do it here. I can do it in the 87, I can't do it here. If the uh, reverser was in the neutral position, then that racket you can hear in the background uh, stops. Still haven't hit any uh, of the neutral sections. Doesn't seem to be any on this. Uh, certainly not this part of this line. Look like 
Basically, it says you don't get any bonuses for it, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Keep hitting the 75, no problem. There we go. Uh, Cast air's main uh, reach. So the next thing is the Abington Loop, and that is my final destination. Uh, I have to stop on that. So it's about 15 miles away. Eh? Hey? You got 350 points, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how or why, but I'll certainly take it. Since I, like, you know, finally sussed out how to uh, drive these things, the, the 86 and the 87, they have become uh, favourites. Um, whereas I used to hate the things because I just could not get on with it at all. I couldn't, you know, barely get the things to move. But that said, I am rather glad that they are the only two that have the, the tap changer control. Interesting to see if any newer ones like Japanese or American ones, for example. Um, quite 
quite a few in uh, Eastern Europe though, because I mean, the 86 and 87, actually they're both still in service today, but uh, when they were building them, a lot of them ended up in uh, Bulgaria of all places for some reason, and uh, Hungary, they also bought quite a few. Look at the speed limit, you can do a tonne now if you wanted. Yeah, I could, do, loud. Yeah, I could do 110. Uh, if I was in a class 87, I could do 110. In this, well, it's now 100. But yeah, I could do that. For some reason, no, they're telling me I've got to stick to 75. Although, the fact that I am sticking to 75, and my ETA is still saying that I'm going to arrive about a minute early, it's probably just as well. from the uh, Amundsen Loop. I'm coming up to a signal that's green. Yeah, 
If the signal was yellow or red, then I'd have an air horn blowing in the face. Approaching 76, so we can't have that. feeling stopping this fucking great thing it is gonna take some doing it. There's one thing I can certainly say is I have not perfected this game.
the uh, tipper tapper is off. So I haven't got to stop the whole train on that orange section there. I've just got to make sure that my load comes. See the red lights up ahead. But what this is is basically a, a passing lane. So I stop here so that an express train that's coming past can, can get past me. Because obviously they always have priority over uh, freight. Alright, what I can do while I'm here is set that to zero. Oh, at last. <laughs> now I can actually hear myself sing. There we go. Scenario complete. So I've scored 900. Another gold. So, yeah, I do believe, yeah, another gold. So three scenarios done and three golds. One of them in a class 86, which I never would have uh, expected. Even like, you know, a couple of days ago, I would never have believed for a minute that I would have got or any kind of rating um, in a class 86, let alone a fucking gold. So, um, yeah, well pleased with that. But uh, I think that will do um for this for this stream unless there's anything else in the messages to catch up with uh, no it's just scotty said three gold nicely done yeah i'm i I'm, I'm yeah i'm fucking amazed by that uh, i was not expecting that at all so uh yeah there we are um train simulator classic uh yes i am a fan of it uh th this was not a joke suggestion i was quite happy to do a, a stream of this and if there is any demand i could always do some videos of some of my uh, other routes because <laughs> yeah I've, I've got plenty of them i say you know, i've got all that lot um uh plus uh I also have, I can uh, bring it up if it will let me. Okay, let's let's go free roam then. Uh, yeah, I also have the Bristol to Exeter route, which did not appear in Korea because I haven't got any of the right uh, loco um, DLCs to be able to use the uh, Bristol to Exeter route in the uh, career mode. So yeah, that's another one that uh, I have. Um, so yeah, there's there's no shortage of options when it comes to uh, you know doing videos of this game if there is uh, if there is a demand. So you know if you want to see more, let us know in the comments. I suppose <laughs> probably about the only way you're going to be able to let us know. Um, but that yeah yeah that that will do. Uh, now next week. I will be doing a Baldur's Gate 3 stream, the long overdue part 7 of the off, uh, online uh, playthrough. So, yeah, that, that will be next week. And I dare say the week after that, when update 18 comes along for Elite Dangerous, 
there will probably be an Elite Dangerous stream uh, for, for that. So, by my standards, uh, yeah, that's a hell of a lot of uh, live streaming uh, to come over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, a hell of a lot, too. Uh, but for now, um, yeah, job done, so uh, now, go away. Is that up?